channel. So guys, some brand new photos of the WonderCon drops for G.I. Joe Classified have been released. And I want to take a deep dive of this because there's some amazing new vehicles and retro card collections which have been showcased at this year's WonderCon. So let's take a deep dive into this, guys, and see exactly what was dropped at WonderCon 2024. Let's have a look. So now for something not Masters Universe related. <laughs> Over at HisTank.com, they've just dropped some brand new images of the reveals, which were actually debuted at WonderCon 2024. This is pretty cool, guys, and I'm very excited at every single one of these, but particularly for the brand new vehicle, which has finally been revealed. And I want to take a deep dive into this and see exactly what was dropped at WonderCon 2024. Let's have a look, everybody. WonderCon 2024 G.I. Joe reveals official pics of the Cobra, Ferret, ATV, and more. This article was written by Tony Bacala under G.I. Joe Classified for HisTank.com. Definitely give these guys a like and a follow. Tell them that Jay sent you. This particular release outlines all of the pricing information and release schedule, the Geo Joe Classified Series 119 Cobra Ferret and Scout Cobra Ferret ATV will be priced at $54.99 and available this summer of 2024. That price tag kind of scares me a little bit, but we'll have to take a look at the actual photos to see if it's actually worth it. The Geo Joe Classified Series retro carded Snow Serpent will also retail for $24.99, which is in line with their retro card release pricing schedule. Similarly priced will be the Cobra Cardback Eel, and finally rounding it out will be Beachhead on retro carded at $24.99. Let's have a look at some of these amazing photos that were revealed at WonderCon. 2024. There is a new retro carded version of the Snow Serpent. He does look pretty cool, and he's harkening back to the original color scheme of the Snow Serpent from the original G.I. Joe, a real American hero, toy line from the 80s. And we can see here he has a more blue, bright color scheme compared to the first classified release, which had a more darker, subdued look. This one is definitely more toyetic in its nature. He does have a couple of sidearms as well as a brand new rifle, and he still has his snowshoes. But I do believe that this packout is a little bit thinner compared to the original. He does look pretty good here, donning his new colors. This is a re-release, so if you did miss out on the original Snow Serpents, this is your chance to pick this one up on Retro Cards. However, I do believe that many collectors are going to want to keep this guy on card, as that is one of the biggest draws for the Retro Card collection. He does look very, very handsome in this overall color scheme. I do like this a little bit better than the black and white color scheme that he originally had, mainly because I am more into the original toy aesthetic. But there really is no reason you can't have two of these guys in your own personal collection. He really does look amazing, and I can't wait until we get this guy into our collection. The next figure of the line is, of course, the very difficult to get at one point, Cobra Eels. Once again, this is a new packout on the retro card. It comes with pretty much everything he came with in the original packout, as far as we can tell. This version is once again more toy aesthetic in its nature. He has slightly brighter colors and really harkens back to the original release back in the 1980s. This is your chance to pick up the Cobra Eel if you missed out on him in the first run, which was a Amazon exclusive. That was a pretty big sore spot for many people when it finally got released as multiple collectors were just left out in the lurch once the figure had actually hit the pre-orders and had sold out quite quickly in certain regions. Don't sleep on this one, guys. It's another chance to pick up the Cobra Eels for your collection and, of course, get them onto your shelves in the Retro Card Edition. Rounding out the Retro Carded figures is, of course, fan favorite Beachhead. Of course, Beachhead was first released with the Cobra Island editions and the controversy originally released at the time. Right in the middle of the pandemic, he was very difficult to acquire considering people's restrictions, leading to a lot of different resellers, flippers, taking advantage during that time. He was released later on during the Target Collectorthon, and even then, it was actually rather difficult to pick him up. So having him being re-released one more time in the classic card edition with brand new paint decos, which are reminiscent of his original toy release, is a welcome addition for any collector who missed out on Beachhead. He looks pretty amazing here with his brighter colors. I love the attention to detail here. It even looks like he has a slightly different facial sculpt. I'm not sure that's actually correct. He also has this 75 patch, which I can't seem to remember if that was on the original release for Cobra Island, but I do appreciate the effort and the second chance at getting Beachhead into our collections if you missed out on him for Cobra Island. Don't sleep on this one, guys. He really is going to be another sought-after figure in the line. And finally, 
we come to the most anticipated drop of the weekend. That's right, everybody. The Cobra Fair at ATV with Cobra Scout was announced officially at PowerCon. This is an incredible vehicle and one which a lot of fans have been hoping for. And I want to take a deeper dive into this and see whether or not it's going to be worth $54.99 they're advertising it for. On first inspection, we can see some amazing huge treads for this ATV vehicle. The treads themselves are even branded Cobra ATV PNR23, which is a lot of fun, giving it some sort of a real world aspect to it. We can see missiles that are attached to the side of the vehicle. There's a winch in the front, which I don't believe is working, or is it? It's hard to tell from this angle. It has a front-mounted turret, headlight, a side-mounted Gatling gun, which just looks badass. And of course, there is the Cobra Ferret Scout, who looks ready to take on any terrain that the Joes can throw at her. I really like the way the Ferret has turned out. It is one of those classic vehicles in the G.I. Joe line. Zooming in closer, we can see that it comes with a host of different decals. There seems to be some Latin in this insignia. Sempre Fidelis, Serpenis, which doing a quick Google search translates to Always Faithful, which is a, which is a motto of the Marines. That's fascinating. But they've actually added serpents into here, giving it their own twist as a Cobra original. <laughs> That's crazy. There's a model number X02 on the side of the control mount. We can see a lot more details of the driver's seat. Coupe number seven over here. Do not step on this fender. It probably will actually break. Securing the cover probably has a gas tank on that inside. And I really am impressed at the overall look of this vehicle. It's amazing. The Gatling gun seems to be removable so that you can secure it on the left or the right of the roll cage. The Gatling gun can also be used as a standalone weapon. The Cobra Ferret Scout has removed her helmet, revealing that she is more or less a repaint of the already released female officers, at least so much in the reusable parts that she has an engine panel which has been revealed probably for ventilation. The Gatling gun is probably recoilless as a single scout can hold it for use in combat and it doesn't seem like it has a magazine rack at all so it's self-contained to some degree. I really do love the designs of these Cobra Scouts. Again there seems to be quite a bit of reuse here from original releases in the female troopers but for the most part with this new vest and some of the additional accessories that they're included with they really do give the appearance of a brand new figure and i appreciate that it really does come to light when you see this brand new helmet on there and the recoloring of the eyes they look almost amber in nature i love it the helmet itself has this almost serpent-like nature to it the front visor looks like the bill or the snout of a, sn of a serpent with these two little fangs coming in from the top. I really have to give it to the photography team over at Hasbro. They really are doing a kick-ass job for these wonderful photos. Bravo, everybody. This is absolutely amazing. As a matter of fact, here we have two of the Cobra Ferrets rendezvousing at a location and just giving the hand signals quick gestures which they can use to coordinate while in the field. I really like this sort of real-world addition to it. It looks so great. Here's a photo of the Cobra Ferret right out of the packaging. We can see just how clean it is the wheels themselves are jet black. I like the more professional photos where everything's been dusted over to make it look more environmental. Out of the box, it will be much more clean and collector friendly. And we can see a lot more detail here with these close-up shots, how the side missiles are attached, all the wonderful decals pre-applied so you don't have to worry about that. Fingers crossed. We can see that the front mounted turret can actually pivot. And I do believe that the winch is not usable. It's just more of a decoration. Looking like it just rolled out of the factory because it did. There is a shininess to the overall look of the ferret. And the ferret scout also looks very well put together in this overall pack out. The Cobra ferret comes with everything you see here. The ferret itself, the Gatling gun, which is detachable, the two side missiles, Cobra ferret scout with removable helmet. She also includes a small knife and two sidearm pistols. Hasbro has decided to go back to the roots and give us plastic packaging. We can see, much like the original, a windowed box with the Cobra Ferret Scout front facing. This will be a much sought after box for inbox collectors, and it's gonna be an amazing addition to anyone's collection. On the back of the box, we can see the designation number 119 in the line, Cobra Ferret Scout and Cobra Ferret ATV, everything that comes in the actual pack out. This is where we have to ask, at $54.99, is this good value for money? As this is a brand new vehicle from the ground up, I do see the need for a slightly higher price tag. But all in all, I'd have to say that I would have preferred a $45 price tag for something this small. An extra $10 on top of that at $54.99 just seems like it's a little extra for something which is a single person vehicle. However, this being the ferret and its history with G.I. Joe, I think that a lot of collectors are going to be very, very happy with this purchase once it hits the market. And at 
I think a lot of people are still going to love it, especially since it has windowed packaging for those inbox collectors who would definitely give this their full attention. I want to give another huge shout out to HisTank.com for posting these amazing images and their coverage for the WonderCon 2024 G.I. Joe reveals. Definitely give HisTank.com a like and a follow, guys. Tell them that Jay sent you. The G.I. Joe line continues to grow strong in 2024, everybody, with a retro card collection and brand new classified releases. 2024 is shipping up to be a great year for G.I. Joe fans. Yo, Joe. Holy crap, everybody. That was amazing. I mean, the retro collection just keeps getting better and better. They are re-releases of already released classified figures, but for many of us who have actually missed out on some of these figures, I myself am still looking for a Snow Serpent from Classified. This is a wonderful opportunity to pick up some of the figures which you missed out on the first release, including the Cobra Snow Serpents, the Cobra Eels, and of course Beachhead from Cobra Island, who was very difficult to get at one point, re-released, and is still kind of difficult to get your hands on. But the big reveal was definitely the Cobra ATV, Cobra Ferret, and Cobra Scout. This is amazing, guys, and another wonderful vehicle in the line. I do have to say that at $54.99, I was hoping for something a little bit more affordable. With the history of the actual Cobra Ferret itself, it is going to be one of those sought-after vehicles that everyone is looking for. And for inbox collectors, being a windowed packaging really is quite enticing. Let me know your comments in the comment section below, guys. Are you interested in picking up the Cobra Ferret or any of these G.I. Joe retro collections? Is the Cobra Ferret the right price for you? Or is the $55 price tag a little bit steep for you and you would have rather seen $10 less at around $45? Leave those comments in the comment section below, guys. If you enjoyed this episode, guys, please do leave me a like. It really does help me out. And if you're in the position to help out the channel, please consider checking out my Patreon page. It's Mega J Retro on Patreon. Guys, the patrons and channel members of this channel help me make wonderful episodes every single week and I couldn't do it without them. They are the best. Thank you so much for your support, everybody. It really means the world to me. I hope you're all doing well, staying safe. And as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. Cobra! Yo, Joe. Good journey, everybody. Geek proud.